Hi, this lecture is about radio ulnar synostosis, which is a congenital condition that affects the elbow. What are the objectives of this lecture? First, we're going to speak about the pathology, what is the clinical presentation, and then the x-ray picture of radio ulnar synostosis, and then we're going to speak about the treatment option of this condition. A good source that you can use is this book written by myself and Dr. Naga. So what is radio ulnar synostosis? Radio ulnar synostosis is, as we said, it's a congenital condition that affects the elbow in kids. It has a fusion between the proximal part of the radius and the ulna. So if you see in this x-ray, there is fusion here between the radius and the ulna. So these are two different bones. This is the radius, this is the ulna. And you see here, instead of having a joint that these two bones uh, move in relation to each other, they are fused. So they are becoming a one bone in this condition. So how did this, this happen embryologically? It actually, the, all these three bones together in the embryo are one bone, and then the normal development is that they separate. So the humerus become one bone, the radius become one bone, and the ulna become one bone. So what happens embryologically is failure of separation of the proximal part, the upper part of the radius and the ulna. So in a state of this uh, uh, one bone separate into two different bones in this spot, they remain fused together. So again, radio ulnar synostosis is congenital fusion between the radius, this bone, and the ulna, this bone, in the upper part, in the proximal part. So what is the clinical presentation of this condition? The clinical presentation is inability to rotate the forearm. So what is the forearm rotation? Forearm rot uh, rotation is the movement between supination and pronation. Uh, supination in which the position that the palm of the hand is facing forward and pronation is the movement in which the palm of the hand is facing backwards. And this motion happens mainly through the forearm. There is some compensation that happens also from the shoulder and from the wrist, but the main motion of supination and pronation is coming from the forearm, and it happens between the radius and the ulna. So if there is fusion between radius and the ulna, the child will not be able to perform forearm supination and pronation. Again, supination is the palm facing forward, pronation is the palm facing backward. Uh, in the very vast majority of cases, there is uh, some degree of fixed pronation of the forearm. It can range it from a mild degree to severe degree of pronation. Uh, and as we said, uh, uh, the child will still be able to have some rotation happening from the shoulder and from the wrist, um, but he will be losing uh, uh, the um, motion happening uh, through the forearm. Condition is usually bilateral, about uh, more than two thirds of the cases are bilateral. Uh, and um, uh, despite that um, uh, inability to rotate the forearm, between supination and pronation, the children is usually very functional. They usually have very minimal uh, affection of their daily activities. Um, these cases may be passed uh, unnoticed for years. Some of these pre kids present uh, when they are five or six or even seven or eight years old. Uh, when someone in school discover that the child, for example, is not able to uh, hold the music instrument, or sometimes the kid gets enrolled in karate classes and he's not able to supinate. Uh, but in most cases, uh, kids are very uh, functional uh, uh, with this condition. So this is a picture of a, a child who had um, uh, bilateral radio ulnar synostosis. I'm trying to supinate and I'm showing you that I cannot get the palm to face forward. Despite that, if you see here, the child is using the maximum supination that he can get through the wrist and he's trying to externally rotate the shoulder the maximum he can do, but he still is not able to fully supinate the, uh, the uh, uh, forearm. You can see here that this is the x-ray showing proximal radio ulnar fusion or proximal radio ulnar synostosis. Um, if you can see here, this child uh, is presenting with this condition bilateral. Uh, he's unable to fully supinate the forearm. Uh, this is actually a unilateral case and it's a good example so we can see the difference. So let's look here to the right side, which is the normal side. The child can move his uh, forearm and from full supination here, there is the palm is facing forward to full pronation. 
Um, however, if you notice here the left side, which is the affected side, here the child can reach full pronation, but he cannot reach full supination. Compare between the right, the normal side, and the left, which is the abnormal side, he cannot fully supinate. Uh, and uh, despite he's trying his maximum with the wrist motion and with the shoulder, see how much external rotation he's doing in his shoulder, he's not able to fully supinate. Um, as we said, this is the, was the first presentation of this child. You can see he's about eight or nine years old. Uh, and uh, during all these years, uh, no one noticed that he has a problem uh, uh, till um, uh, uh, the school noticed that he's not able uh, to perform some uh, uh, activities with the musical instrument. Um, uh, because as you said, as we said that um, uh, he, um, despite he's not able to fully supinate, um, he's able to do uh, basically all the activities of the daily life uh, through the compensation from the shoulder and the wrist. Uh, um, and uh, in this age that we uh, uh, live, in which most of the activities on the computer, on, on the tablets are done during pronation, uh, really uh, these children are uh, not uh, severely, or the vast majority of these children are not um, uh, 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 affected um, uh, seriously with this condition uh, because most of the activities that uh, we do now on the computer are on the pronation uh, position. So what is the treatment um, of this condition? As we said, the non-operative treatment is the main treatment because um, most of these kids are really not affected uh, with, uh, with this condition. They are able to perform uh, 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 most if not all activities of daily life uh, and surgery is rarely indicated uh, if the child is not affected with this uh, uh, condition in his daily activities uh, because as we said most of the activities required now pronation and not supination and then as we said also the uh, the uh, compensation from the wrist and the shoulder can get the child some of the supination so um, uh, when do we think about uh, surgery uh, if there is affection in the function which usually happen in bilateral case, in cases with severe hyperpronation so if the kid is severely hyperpronated more than 60 degree his shoulder and wrist motion cannot um, compensate for this hyper rotation and it's bilateral we may think about uh, a surgery, a surgical intervention in these uh, children so if we decided we're going to do surgery what surgery are we going to do uh, the surgery is usually repositioning of the forearm uh, and not excision uh, of the synostosis. So uh, if we go in and try to excise the fusion between the both bone, uh, usually the recurrence is extremely high uh, and by about one year the child uh, forearm is fixed again with bony fusion. Uh, so um, uh, this surgery which is excision of fusion uh, is usually not very successful. So uh, the surgery that is commonly done for this condition if we decided to do surgery is repositioning of the forearm in a more functional position and as we discussed these kids are mostly uh, having uh, a hyperpronation so the um, uh, position uh, uh, repositioning is usually uh, uh, putting them into a, a more degree of uh, supination so giving them a few more degrees of supination uh, and then fixing the forearm in that new position so the surgery is not uh, for the most Part is not excision of the fusion because the recurrence is high. It's repositioning the forearm in a better functional position by giving the child a more supination. Thank you. All my videos are for educational purpose only. Please consult your doctor before any decision. Thanks.